how to create a gRPC server in TypeScript. The main benefit you will acquire in this video is to see how simple is it to have a strongly typed gRPC server because of the auto-generation of the model objects from the protocol buffer, as well as all the utility methods to access and set values. In this video, you will see how to bootstrap a brand new project inside Visual Studio Code using Node.js, NPM, and TypeScript to have a strongly typed solution driven by the protocol buffer. The first step is to start a new NPM project that will hold all our third-party libraries. Then uh, we need to install a few packages. So we're going to install TypeScript, gRPC, TS Node Dev that will execute our TypeScript server, gRPC tools that's going to generate TypeScript's JavaScript, and a plugin called Proto, Proto.ts. So while it's downloading, we will create a couple of files. First of all, we're going to create the server.ts. This is where all the code we're going to write. Then we're going to create another file that's going to be the script that's going to generate um, all TypeScript and JavaScript code for us from the protobuf. Now that all the NPM package are downloaded, we can uh, create a TypeScript file, a basic one. And the next step is really to create a single entity. We're going to do a house entity uh, and we're going to have all the code generated around it. So to do that, we need to do a file.proto. I'm going to call it house.proto. And this file is going to contain all the definition of the house. So first of all, to have everything uh, working, we need to have the syntax to be used uh, in this project, which is going to be the Proto 3, the latest one. Then we need to uh, add our main entity, which is going to be a house. Aside from the house, we need to have some functions to fetch the data. What we're going to do is create three functions. Uh, we're going to put them under the service, house service, and we're going to have one that's going to get the houses by size and the uh, request is going to have a parameter where we will define the minimum square of, uh, footage that we want. Actually, these two are messages uh, like the house that we defined it before and we define the minimum square feet and the response is going to be an array of IDs and it's the same thing for all the other um, services meaning that we're going to have one for the house that's going to be an ID right here that's going to return a house and the other one uh, is going to take a list of IDs and it's going to return a response which is a list of house right there. So once we have all that, uh, what we need to do is to generate the code from that file. And everything is done with this script, which is simply five lines of code. The first one is using the protocol that's going to generate the JavaScript, the gRPC access, and the TypeScript from the, our file house.proto. Uh, one thing that is important is to make sure that this file is executable then we can execute the file Oops. so there was no error and you can see that four files were generated two files were javascripts and two files were typescript the grpc one is going to define all our service that we're going to define in the typescript file uh, pretty soon uh, it contains also all the definitions, all the services, uh, and many other uh, objects. Uh, the other ones contain uh, the object, for example, the house, all the messages that we're going to send. So let's jump uh, into the server. So the server is actually uh, using the library gRPC and is as simple as four lines of code. It's getting the server then we create a service so you can have many services uh, in that particular one we're going to use the uh, service that is uh, the one that we generated uh, before 
meaning these three functions. And uh, all this interface and the service is inside the gRPC underscore PB. The only uh, class that is not defined is the actual code inside those functions. And the reason is simply because it cannot be auto-generated. These functions will actually go fetch data from a database. In this particular project, what we're going to do is just fetch the information from a list. So we need to create that class. And it implement, uh, ex it's going to extend the interface. So before implementing, we should just do a little shortcut here and get some data. So here I have a list of three houses of type house, which come from house underscore PB. I'm using as object to get really just the definition of the object and not all that the gRPC uh, wrapper around, which would have like the getter and setter for every field. So here's all my three uh, houses. And what we need to do is implement uh, all the um, implement all the service. So uh, to do that, I'm gonna just copy paste a couple of them because it's it's really just uh, repetitive a little bit. So what you need to do is take all the the name here and to take. The, the types that we are getting in and out. So for that for that project, it's all unary call. I won't go in detail about the different kind of calls that is possible to do with protobuf and gRPC, but in that particular case, that's uh, unary call. So what we're gonna do is uh, take the request, get the parameter where is the square feet, filter down to have the minimum, and build the response with the house by size response and return the list of IDs. We're gonna do the same thing for the, the, the two other functions. So we have the get house, which use a, a house request and a return a house response. This one is a little bit more of code because we need to set the ID, street name, house number. But at the end is the same logic. We fetch from the database, create a response, return it from the callback. And finally, the last one is get houses, which get uh, requests, which is a list of IDs. And we get the list of IDs, go in the array again, filter down, build a response and return. And, and that's about it. So the, the next step is just to create a, a start function uh, for the server. And this can be done simply by using TS node dev. From there we can do npm start and the server is already started and ready to receive requests. So for that what we're going to use is a tool called Bloom RPC. It's open source and it allows us to interrogate the, the server that we just created. So you use the IP and port that you define in the bind function here and then we can do some query so minimum square feet we should receive three and if we do a bigger house we get two uh, if we get a house number 10 should have nothing number one should be the street name funny street so if we go here, number one was funny for three. In this video, we saw a glimpse of how we can create a gRPC server that serves a single entity under 100 lines of code. In an upcoming video, we will see how to clean up the current code, but also how to use it from another TypeScript project. Actually, we will build a GraphQL server in TypeScript that will feed itself on the gRPC surface that we just generated. So the whole goal is to have everything from the database to the consumer strongly typed and having us not to type those manually. See you soon.